How's it going everyone? Ben here, your friendly neighborhood transgender medical student, and today we're going to be going over sickle cell disease treatment and why racism is a big hindrance to actually implementing the cure of sickle cell because there is a cure and how it prevents other forms of treatment for sickle cell patients. If you don't know what sickle cell disease is, it's a blood disorder which causes the normal circular round red blood cell to have more of a sickle shape, like a crescent moon kind of shape. And although that doesn't sound really serious when you're actually hearing about it, those sickled cells are not the right shape to go through blood vessels. So as someone with sickle cell disease grows up, those blood vessels get really sticky. And when those blood vessels get sticky, it starts clogging the arteries and veins in your own body, causing things called vaso-occlusive crisis and acute chest syndrome. To simplify it, essentially what those are is that because they clog those blood vessels, it causes extreme, extreme pain to the patient. And even something as simple as having stress can you know, ensue an episode. And unfortunately, even though treatments for sickle cell disease has gotten better over the last 100 years, the prognosis of having sickle cell disease still means that patients generally have a lower lifespan than the average population. I also want to point out, before I get to the nitty gritty details of everything, is that sickle cell disease is a genetic heritable disease. So mommy and daddy can produce a child with sickle cell disease, and it usually has a higher incidence among people with sickle cell trait. That's different from sickle cell disease. And people with sickle cell trait ends up having normal lifespans. They don't need as much treatment. Yes, there's some medical complications that happen when you get older, but it's not as severe as sickle cell disease. But why is it that so many people have this genetic heritable disease? And that's because of malaria. Before we had treatments for malaria, malaria killed hundreds of thousands of people primarily in the African continent, but malaria is also pretty common in South America and also parts of Asia. Malaria mostly harms people by entering the red blood cells and reproducing in those red blood cells, destroying them and causing all sorts of problems in the body. When someone has sickle cell disease or sickle cell trait, they become resistant to malaria because the malaria parasite that comes from the mosquito can't enter the red blood cells as efficiently. So people with sickle cell trait actually benefit from having the sickle cell trait because it allows them to live in parts of the world where malaria can kill people, but they become resistant to it. Unfortunately, that means sickle cell disease is also in the population. And even though people with sickle cell disease are practically very, very resistant to catching malaria, they have a disease that can shorten their lifespan as well. That's a little bit of the background behind sickle cell disease if you don't know about it, but I really, really want to focus this video on how treatments of sickle cell disease have actually been very, very good. Like, we actually have found a cure for sickle cell disease, but it's not being implemented enough. But I also want to point out some of the racial harms when it comes to medical racism affecting new treatments for sickle cell disease. In the United States, there's approximately 100,000 people living with sickle cell disease, the one that can shorten someone's lifespan. And of that 100,000, one in every 365 black Americans have sickle cell disease and one in 16,000 Latinx people have sickle cell disease. So in summary, a large majority of people with sickle cell disease are people of color, and that plays a lot into how much is being funded into sickle cell disease research. I want to compare the research funding that's going to sickle cell disease compared to another disease called cystic fibrosis that primarily affects white people and white Americans. There's about 30,000 people living with cystic fibrosis in the United States. Now, I do want to emphasize that both sickle cell disease and cystic fibrosis should get as much funding as possible to help these kids survive and live normal lifespans as anyone else. But I really, really want to point out how hypocritical our government is in funding the research behind something that affects mostly white people versus something that mostly affects people of color. Compared to sickle cell disease, cystic fibrosis research is generally more funded 7 to 11 times per patient more than those with sickle cell disease. That means they're getting a lot 
a lot more funding by the U.S. government to find treatments for it. And to this day, there's only about five to six treatments for sickle cell disease, while when it comes to cystic fibrosis, there's about 15 different drugs to help treat it. Another really problematic thing I see some clinicians use to refer to people with sickle cell disease is call them sicklers, which honestly makes me feel icky even saying it, but it reduces the patient down to just their illness. It dehumanizes them. It takes away their autonomy. It takes away their identity as a person, and they're just someone that seems to have a disease, and we're just seeing them as the disease itself. I, I don't know. It doesn't sit right with me, and if I know a clinician that uses that word, I... I, I, I don't I I don't see you as a good colleague. I also want to point out that we actually do have a cure for sickle cell. Like I don't know why it's not talked about enough. I don't know why it's not even talked about in the general public, but there is actually a cure and it's a bone marrow transplant. If you are able to find a bone marrow match and get their bone marrow transplanted into you, you're cured of sickle cell disease. Like there's been at least a couple hundred children every year that get this bone marrow transplant and they're just cured. And I actually asked, I was very confused on why it's not widely accepted on why it's not widely practiced to give people with sickle cell bone marrow matches a bone marrow transplant. I asked this to my um, attending who happens to be a black physician and he basically said, what do you think? And I responded racism and he said, of course, there's reasons why young children of color are not getting enough bone marrow transplants, enough bone marrow matches so they can, you know, eradicate a disease that would shorten their lifespan and live a normal, healthy adult life and die old. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous that we don't have a system that allows every child born with sickle cell disease to get a bone marrow transplant to essentially eradicate an illness that shouldn't exist in the century. But I do want to end this video with the light at the end of the tunnel and that is that more and more people of color are registering themselves in the Be The Match bone marrow donation program. If you haven't done so, I highly recommend it so we can find matches for these kids with sickle cell disease. But also new research is showing that you don't need a complete bone marrow transplant to fully cure the disease. Um, a person only needs about 20 to 30 percent of regular red blood cells to not be affected by the symptoms of sickle cells. So there's new research such as um, CASPR, CRISPR, CRISPR research, that's a new gene technology research that's going, been going on to help cure the illness, but we're just not getting funding. And I really really emphasize everyone that's watched this video, everyone that wants to be health advocates for people of color, for people of color that have these conditions, is to advocate for that, advocate for research funding, and to let your legislators know that we want cures to these illnesses that there's cures for. Like, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand, like, polio was completely eradicated because a bunch of billionaires decided to completely fund it and it's almost non-existent in this world. Smallpox doesn't exist anymore. So why can't that happen with sickle cell disease? Anyways, I hope you gained something from this video. I hope you learned something. I hope you will look at my other videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my daily life, and I'll see you on the next video. This has been.